Isaac the Head Splitter Hardman. Welcome. Thanks for having me, mate. I appreciate it. And thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Uh, you arrived back in Australia, I think it was yesterday, after a stay over in the States. How are you feeling? Feel awesome, mate. Um, no jet lag. Uh, not yet, anyway. It's the first time. I've been through there one time, um, going to Mexico, but that was for a completely different reason. When I was way younger, so I didn't feel anything. But um, coming back, we landed Friday morning, 5 o'clock, was at the gym by 9 uh, doing a nice hard session. Um, two sessions yesterday, did me weights in the afternoon and then again, bang into it this morning. So um, I'm feeling good, feeling really good. So um, yeah, it's another two hard weeks of training here back in Brisbane and then get the business done come March 12th. Nice one, mate. Not skipping a beat at all. Now, while you were over in the States, you were based in uh, Las Vegas, training at the top rank gym. Is that right? Well, no, we're based in we're in Las Vegas, but our base home base was um, Split T Boxing Club, right. um, just outside of Vegas. It's but it took about 10, 15 minutes from the strip um, with a bloke named Eric. He's a Canadian fella. Um, he's who hosted us at the gym. Uh, Glenn Jennings sort of put us on to him, uh, Tim Zoo's manager, because uh, Tim, when Tim was there, he was trying to find um, a sort of quieter place because he went down through Mayweather's and stuff, and they stumbled across this bloke, and he's. Um, Canadians are uh, very much like a like Aussies, very warm and yeah. they got a good sense of humour. Um, so yeah, that's where we were based, and then um, we bounced around the likes of Top Rank and then Bones Adams Gym as well, um, a few other places, Cattle Plants, but um, Gym which was called DLX. So, um, but our home base was Split T Boxing. Yeah, I, I did see that you, you got some rounds in with Caleb Plant. You got some rounds in with uh, Shane Mosley Jr. as well. Can you tell us about that experience? And did you get some rounds in with some other fighters we might know? Um, yeah, man. Like the first uh, big experience for me was, um, well, Linnell Bellows was my first round. So he's fought. Um, at one point, he was sixteen and as a super middleweight, and he's at the end of his career now. Um, probably the most famous person he's everyone would know. He's he fought um, Edgar Belunga. Got stopped by him, but he's, you know, well older now. But he was a, he was red hot back in the day. And landing on a Saturday, we were inspiring him on a Monday. He was a great fella. He was at Split T. But then on Wednesday, we were off at uh, Top Rank and Shane Mosley Jr. I think they expected me to um, get pasted a little bit. Um, you know, they sort of said, oh, yeah, you can spar Shane Mosley. And I was in awe, you know, of... These yeah. guys coming from Australia, we're fans of these names. Um, and his old man was in there still sparring, and he's, you know, a legend of sport absolutely mm. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, he was in there still sparring with the young cats, um, <laughs> so which was really cool. And, um, yeah, we got up in the ring, and they got, like, two big rings in there in top rank, and um, <clears throat> they sort of just brushed me a little bit to start with. Yeah, you spar with him, got up, and then the ref, they had little refs in the ring, and... Um, he sort of looked at me, he said, four rounds, mate? I said, nah, we're doing eight. And he sort of looked at me and was like, yeah, okay, we'll see about that. And um, by the end of the, the eighth round, uh, two rings have run at one time, but we had everyone around our ring and we had a proper punch on the last 30 seconds. And um, as I got out of the ring, everyone's sort of saying, good stuff, Aussie, and fist bumping me on the way out. So, And we got the invite back and then uh, Shane Mosley came out to chat with me and my coach after said, mate, that was unreal. Can you come to our gym at Bones Adams' place? Um, so if you're getting asked to come back, it's always a good sign. So... You know, I know, for instance, I had one particular trainer partner over there that who shouldn't have been anywhere near a boxing ring, not just with me, that's with anyone. And yeah. um, you're not asking those types of people back. So you're getting invites back and getting asked. Uh, Caleb Plant sorted us out, you know. Uh, like mm. he, he was looking for us. He heard of this Aussie doing well, and he said, mate, come over, do the round. So, yeah, it was awesome, man, really cool. All right, well, let's get on to your fight coming up on the 12th of March. It's going to be a big night for you, obviously, on a Tim Zhu and Tony Harris fight. You're fighting Rowan Murdoch um, for the IB vacant IBF Australasian uh, super middleweight title. Uh, with the sparring that you've been getting in uh, recently and the experience that you've accumulated in your pro career now, you've got to be coming into that fight feeling super confident. Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely, mate. Um, I'm all, I'm a very confident person as it is. You know, put me up against King Kong and I'm going in confident. Um, that's just who I am. And confidence breeds success, and success breeds confidence. So, um, you know, but I, we didn't 
get over to the States, no one will fight in Ronald Murdoch. We were meant to be fighting a bloke called Amilica Vidal, who's mm. at the moment, I think, number 19 box rec. Um, he's like a six foot two um, Euro, a guy from Uruguay. Um, 19 wins, 12 by knockout or something like that. And he has a like a double cover walk up sort of style. Mm. Um, and then it just turned out uh, you know, four days in, we got news that he had taken another fight in America and um, Rowan Murdoch was on the table. And Rowan's got that real flashy sort of, I, I guess, American style, you know, um, cross body cover, hands down low, flicking the jab out. And um, every person I spied was a super middleweight or heavier. So, um, yeah. and they had that style that Rowan has. So it's sort of the stars lined up and worked out perfectly. Me and my uh, coach were sort of talking about it on the way out. They're like, how how crazy, you know, we get Rowan Murdoch, who's got that style, hands down low, watching him again in his last fight against Zach Parker, hands down low, moving his head heaps, which is, I feel like a lot of the rounds replicated that um, American style, I guess. Um, so um, I'm feeling very confident in this fight. Um, Rowan did really well on his way through, if you look at his record. Um, you know, he's I give credit to anyone that gets in the ring, but coming through, I feel like he, he was um, navigated really well through the rankings and he got all the way to that title eliminator against Zach Parker, which was a great fight. Zach Parker's, um, you know, he just fought John Ryder, who's John Ryder's now on to looking at Canelo. So they're the cream of the crop and Rowan was on a bigger stage than mine. A bigger stage than I've ever been on over in England in his backyard with Zach Parker, and uh, he did. He, he got stopped in the eleventh round, but it was uh, probably a pretty early stop. He got, he got put down, he got back up, and they waved it off. He probably could have got through the last round, I feel like. But him being the B side over in the UK, of course, they're going to wave it off at any chance. But um, I'm feeling very confident for this fight. After that, Rowan had two bounce back fights. He was pretty inactive through COVID, which everyone was. Yeah. Um, you either fought took the opportunities that were presented, which I did. I fought four times through COVID, same with Tim Zhu. I took mm. the opportunities presented. Some people didn't, um, and he didn't, and now he's fought a Les Sherrington and a guy who's zero. In Thailand, I think. Bali. Yeah, the last one. Yeah, yeah, Thailand or Bangkok or something mm. like that, which would have been like a sparring match, mate. Like yeah. he, he wouldn't have taken he, – I think he was on holidays. He did, he did it for an experience. I don't know, man, but um, I don't count that as a fight. But he definitely has had – He's um he his best fight and his hardest fight was Zach Parker. Zach Parker. Yeah. Um and that was a good good showing. So um, whereas I feel like I've I've had the hard route on the way through. My first three fights were up a lot of heavyweight on a week's notice and I ironed them out. Um so so, Sheen? Yeah, I've done the hard work and hopefully Hey, was that? Oh, I forget the bloke's name, Sheen. I think it was your second fight. You took the fight yeah, and should have noticed. Sheen was my first one. First yeah, round. Yeah. Four, four days' notice, yeah. yeah. And then um um, oh, sorry, Mark Luke, uh, Lucas Miller, and then Matt Sheehan, Matt Sheehan and then Tola Petty were a lot of heavyweights. Yeah, so um, I've done the hard work, and you can't you can't deny that. So um, you, you you'll see it on fight night. I guarantee it. Like the um, inactivity will play a part, um, and the hard fights I've had in the ring. And now I've had I did uh, close to a hundred rounds, ninety five rounds I did over there. And just, short time I was over there so and every single time I felt sick to my stomach going Monday, Wednesday, Friday because you just didn't know who you'll get whereas yeah. here in Brisbane you know you're sparring say Connor Wallace on a Thursday you got two days to think about it this one you just turn up and you're sparring this bloke so it's, it's like got. a fight every time you're getting into the ring so yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll show fight night well throughout your career you've fluctuated you've gone up down in, in weight uh, 160 is where you sort of spent most of your time but 168 do you feel that that's that, that's the right fit for you That that's going to work for you moving forward no I'm a middleweight for sure 100% um, yeah. like I went over to the States um no one was I like thinking I was going to be fighting a middleweight. That's where I want to be because I'm a big middleweight and I can get there safely. Um, it's hard work to get there, but it, it takes a lot of discipline and dedication, which is what boxing, um, you know, you owe boxing that. So um, I'm a middleweight. It's just this fight happened. We couldn't get another middleweight and I didn't yeah. want to miss the opportunity of fighting on the massive card. So I jumped up to super middleweight. Yes, I fought at light heavyweight previously. And, and super middleweight just means there'll be a little bit of extra fucking horsepower on the right hand when I bang it off his <laughs> chin. So um, I feel a little bit more comfy up here, being like um, more comfortable uh, throughout the day, not being cranky with 
this, that, and the other because I'm deprived of food. I can mm. sort of just sit comfortably and cut the last little bit of weight in the last week, and it'll be it'll be all smiles. Whereas when I'm a middleweight, leave me alone for the last week. You don't want to come talk to me because I'm a cranky bastard. Yeah. You know. Um. They, I just uh, I'll be happier this time around. It'll be nicer, and there'll be a bit of extra horsepower on that right hand for sure. Well, speaking of that right hand, the Australian. Uh... Boxing Awards awarded you knockout of the year for 2022. I was there. I interviewed you afterwards, and my initial thought was that's definitely yeah, knockout of the year. <laughs> I think they're still <laughs> peeling Bo Hardis off the canvas, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, unfortunately, he's a good fella. Yeah, uh, no, he's a good fella. He walked it off, but um, eventually. But uh, you're focused on this. You're focused <laughs> on this fight. I, I get that. But when you receive um, awards like that, when you get a nod uh, of acknowledgement for your work, is it? It must feel nice. It, it, it's like a bonus um, just to get that nod from oh. the boxing community. Does it sort of spur you on a bit more? Absolutely. Um, you know, there was moments after that knockout. Let's write that up. Chalk that down for the, ne- the best knockout for the next 10 years coming, I think. Um, but it is good to be acknowledged for the hard work in the ring because you don't often get it. Um, you get a quick congratulations if you win on social media by people you don't know. Mm. The people in my corner, my wife, my coach, my coach's wife and the boys at the gym, they um you ride that wave for a little while longer, but it's quickly forgotten. You're about as good mm. as your last fight. Thankfully, people remember me for the knockout of the year. Before I had that fight, people remember me getting chinned by Zarafa in the second round. Yeah. So, I mean, I was a shit can that couldn't fight and this and that. He was a pub fighter. And, but mm. now, you know, I'm the knockout of the year guy. So um, it's been good. And the guy that just sparred with Caleb Plant, so I'm a hot commodity at the moment. And that's the thing with um, boxing boxing fans, I guess, um, short memories. You know, they, they're they quick to forget. So um, it's nice to be acknowledged every now and again. I don't need it per se. I don't, you know, I don't look for it. I don't go fishing for it. But it is nice every now and again. Well, staying on the Australian scene, uh, no limit. They've become a dominant force in Australian boxing. Um, they have the partnership with Foxtel. They put on good shows. They put on good undercards. Not that the other promotional teams don't do the same, but you're, you know, it's it's. They have become quite dominant, and you are the um, you're right in the thick of it with no limit. Um, you know, there's excitement in your career. It's like you were saying. You know, people are paying attention again to Isaac Hardman. Um, I want to ask you. When you parted ways with DNL, was that hard for you to do to continue on your journey towards achieving and becoming a, a world champion? Was that hard for you to do now that you're involved with No Limit? Um, are you still a free agent, can I ask as well? Nah. Uh, well, I'm about to ink a contract. Uh, ah, nice. Obviously, Limit, No Limit. Um, if the contracts come through, we're just on and out and things. But yeah, I'll, I'm signed up to the No Limit. It's the... Um, you know, it's the, um, like you said, mate, they're forced to be reckoning with. They're putting mm. the best shows on they have. So I believe for the last three years in competition with Dean Lonigan, every now and again, Dean would throw up a good show that, you know, rivaled um, No Limits show and vice versa. Um, but now sort of No Limits clean, cleaned out the competition and they're, they're the leading horse in the race. So, um, you know, they're an Australian promotion. It would be like I had offers, Eddie Hearn wanted me, he messaged me personally. He wanted me to fight on his card here in Matchroom. Um, there's guys like Luda Bella, um, PBC, all these guys, um, in particular Eddie Hearn. You know, that'd be an easy sign up as well. And it'd be cool for Instagram to just take a photo and say, oh, I'm signed up to no, uh, Matchroom. But yeah. really, in the grand scheme of it, that promotion wouldn't give a flying fuck if I won or lost, really. You know, because they're, they're looking after their guys in the UK and Canelo yeah. and. Uh, good American that you know sells tickets. They're not caring about the Aussie. Like you see what they did with Stevie Spark. He was about mm. to get raw. T- you know they it, he didn't fly him over to get that win. And thankfully, so it wasn't it for the qualification. Yeah, yeah, they're they you know you seen it on the scorecard. So um, you yeah, know, they um they're not looking after the Aussies like say No Limit will because it's in No Limit's best interest to. Um, look out for me and give me good fights and Develop promote me you, because I am putting money in their, their mm. pocket. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Whereas mm. someone in the UK ain't caring about little Aussie from Caboolture in Brisbane, Queensland. Yep. They don't give a fuck. So um, yep. no limits where I'll be. Um, and man, it wasn't hard to part with DNL. Um, Dean Lonigan, me and him had a very 
transparent, open um, sort of relationship, working relationship. And mm. I asked straight out for an uh, official release because he had dropped the deal with uh, Fox Sports and that's what my contract was written in. If there was no TV, you know, it's voided. And um, yeah, he, he um, was waiting until December 31st, January 1st, to see if he could renew something. Didn't come through and I said, he said, see you later, mate. Um, best wishes. And you know, there's no point in burning bridges. You know, me yep. and Dina had our ups and downs, me as a person um, and promoters, man. You know, I'm the boxer at the end of the day and they try to tell me this, that and the other and I'm worth this when it's not that. But, um, yeah, there's no point in burning bridges because one day, you know, Dean's got um, that Andre, he's got um, um, Pampalone, he's got still Jaya Pattaya. Like, there's still these guys on there, Showtime Fleming's with him, I think, so... Um, you know, you've seen the Tim Zoo Jeff Horn, that was a co-promoted show in a stadium in Townsville, and that was a DNL No Limit thing. So there's no point burning a bridge with DNL. They done great to market me and get me where I was off the back of my ability in the ring and on the microphone. Um, but yeah, I'm thankful for DNL. And that from the fourth fight, I was all the way up to my 14th fight, I was on their platform. So um, if I wasn't on that platform, I wouldn't have the eyes. So I'm thankful for sure. Dean and uh, the promotion, but it's time to move on. and. I feel like he put me on the launching pad and now it's lift off, you know, lift off and no limit. That's. Um, you've predicted a big 2023 for yourself. So I just want to ask you, mate, um, where do you want to be by the end of this year in your pro career? Where, where do you see yourself? Good question. Um, I sanctioned across at least two sanctioned bodies, IBF and WBR. I've been in before. This one's with the IBF. Um, sanctioned across at least two sanctioned bodies in the top 10 which I feel like I can um, achieve because I've been there before. Um, three fights, I want three, you know, there was times where I had three fights in the space of 54 days, but those times are gone because the level's getting a little bit more up there and we've got yeah. to be a bit more strategic, I guess, now I've got a manager and pick a route and a path to a world title. But, uh, man, the ultimate goal for me, and there's no lie about that, I got dusted up by Michael's Rafa in two rounds and I looked like a pub fighter because I was too emotional. And I beat myself that night, 100%. But um, I can't finish boxing without having another go at that bloke. You know, um, I don't like him. Me and him just don't see eye to eye. I feel like he's a shit person. Um, he beat me. He's got the bragging rights, 100%. He chinned me. He put me down in two rounds. All credit to him. Power yeah. to him. But uh, I, I don't finish boxing unless I get my hands back on him again, for sure. Um, and he's doing his thing. He's got his world title with Falco coming up. That'll likely be for a world title, vacant world title, IBF or WBA. Well, he's done well to be where he is, credit to him, but I don't like the bloke and I can't finish boxing without putting my hands on him again the right way, for sure. Well, I'm glad you brought him up because I wasn't going to, so um, so you definitely want to get some payback. So, all right, we'll have to keep for an sure, eye on that. Just yeah. I know... I, I know that I'm not that person that yep. that person that fought that night was wound up young immature with I thought I had a handle on it I thought oh no I'm getting in easy but um, you, you seen it he was in my head I was emotionally he accused me of being a racist yep. and my, my wife is of colour you know I've just had a mm. baby girl who probably have, be of colour when she grows so I was fucking I, I beat myself that night I know, I know that 100% and yeah. I can go to bed happy about that he didn't beat me, I beat me. So, um, But he's got bragging rights, so he's in the driver's seat. He can sit there and laugh at me because he chinned me in two rounds. Good on him. But um, I get him back and I fucking dust him up, I promise you. Fair enough, mate. Well, it's been absolutely awesome chatting with you, mate. I just want to ask you, where can your fans and where can the people who are just discovering Isaac Hardman, where can they follow you on social media? Hardman Boxer. H-A-R-D-M-A-N-B-O-X-A, Boxer. Uh, that's my Instagram. I'll, I'll try to reply to every message. I, that's a thing for me. It's almost like a curse I have. I try and get back to everyone. And Isaac Headsplit Hardman on Facebook. Um, if you see me out and about in Brisbane, come say hello because I'd love to have a chat to everyone. Um, that's where you find me. Isaac Hardman, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you've got a lot on with the training, the baby. How is parenthood? How's it treating you? Unreal, mate. Honestly, <laughs> the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. Um, I missed it for three weeks, but hands down, take boxing away from me, take everything away from me, leave me my baby girl, my wife, and I'll be a happy man for sure. Family is number one, my friend. It's been excellent talking Absolutely. with you, and we'll see you on the 12th, my friend. 
Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Isaac. Cheers, mate.